The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi everyone, Monday morning, this is June the 13th, and this is the 806 edition, we're going to be repeating this, this will be recorded to be replayed at my usual time, 10 o'clock Eastern, but this is uh, being recorded early, I have to be out of town, so we're looking at the Dow, down 620 in the futures, 30,738. What was the low on the 20th of May? 30,560. We are almost there. Uh, in the pattern that I call the dreaded H, what is the dreaded H pattern? Well, it's a very simple thing that we look at here. It is a pattern that says you've come down sharply and you try to rally. Usually it occurs at a, at one peak or a second peak high, that's peak A or peak B in the Chapman Wave methodology, roll over with a very sharp decline, and you test the left side low. If you take that out significantly, we call it a dreaded H because look at all these different patterns. These are H's right here. All those peak A minuses took out the left side low and went low. And what did they do? They Oh, I didn't even draw this. Let me do this extension right now. This extension says uh, if we continue in this manner of going down lower and lower and lower until we get to a Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone, yeah, that means you go all the way down to the 29,800s. My suspicion is that the 30,000 level is going to be very significant both psychologically and technically. So pre-market, we're looking at the Dow down almost 600 at 30,700. We're looking at the S&P. Let's go to the S&P, the E-mini. The E-mini had a left side low on, I believe that was the same date. Let me just double check. 20th of May, was that? Yep, 20th of May had a low of 3809.50 in the futures. Remember, this is a continuous contract. So, the price gets smoothed out, but that's the price as it stands right now. And the low thus far this morning is 37.98.27. We've taken it out. We've actually started, I can call it, at least for now, we'll call it a leg E to the downside um, in the E-mini. Looking at the QQQs, we'll go to the NQ for the moment because NQ is the NDX 100 futures contract. I think that's going to be very important to, uh, to notate. What are we looking at? We're looking at a new low. 11,491 was the low on the 20th of May. Let me just see. That could have changed. I typed that in at the time. And it is a continuous contract, so it gets smoothed out. 11,871.90. Huh, huh, huh? Could that be Could that be correct? Oh, oh sorry. 11,521.50. And what are we doing today? We've gone lower down. I'm calling this an alternate count leg C to the downside in the dreaded H. We way underneath that. Well, not way, but we're underneath that left side low. Uh, looking at the monthly chart, we're in the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. Got it. We got a hold somewhere around here. Looking at the I, the Russell 2000. I'm going to go to the futures as well. This is. You remember I said that the although the weekly and monthly charts were terrible that the daily chart of the Russell 2000 futures was actually a much better chart than any of the others. Well, it went from a, a trough, and that was even before. That was May the 10th or 12th. Let me just get to that right now. Yes, that was the 12th of May at 1,698.70, and it ran all the way to the 1940s, and here we are at 1757. So once again, we're looking at the daily chart looking much better, than even the weekly chart, just on this arch formation, but the actual chart itself doesn't look good at all. So let me just give a quick summation of what I'm looking at here. I'm going to go to... Um, I'm going to go to the S&P cash index just for the moment because I wanted to show something SPX.X. One of the reasons for subscribers to my opening call, this is one of the largest cash positions we've had in absolutely ages. I mean, we even got out. We had fantastic gains in the Bitcoin GBTC fund that we had. 
for for two years or so, we had huge gains and we got out of it. We kept just a tiny little bit for months now, saying, you know, let's just see how this acts. And then I said about a few weeks ago, I said, we're done. The GBTC, the, the Bitcoin is just, this is a horrible chart and it's going to go much lower. I'll get back to that in a moment. What I wanted to show you is that this long-legged candle of May, we, we closed last week way below the halfway point of the lower wick. And that just says, be careful because you're going to test the left side low. And that's 3810.32. We actually closed at 3900. That would mean we'd have to go down 90 points to get there. But if you look at the E-mini futures, look what we've done already. We're almost there at the left side low. Now, look at this. This is the Bitcoin. Ay, ay, ay. Bitcoin. Dreaded H pattern, but it's really the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m in the daily. We've gone to a leg D in the monthly chart. We were at 69,950. I need to just check now. Does that get smoothed out as well? Do I always have to change that? I think so. Um, 70,025 was the high on the week of the 20, uh, 12th of November. Uh, and look we are, where we are right now, at 23,950. I did not want any part of it. My contention was that Bitcoin had made a high and that if it took out the the whole 28 to 30,000 level at any point on this particular decline, it would be a really serious move to the downside. And that just makes it highly vulnerable. And it's at 24,000 and 15 right now. That's the Bitcoin. Let's just go to gold. Uh, gold had a nice move up late Friday. I don't know what that was all about. Now it's down 18. My suspicion is this 200 period moving average. You see this orange? I Let me just take take a moment here because it's so important. There are, there are certain technical tools that I've used, not just for you know recently, but for decades. In fact, I've used some of these moving averages and some of these patterns like the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence and the slow stochastic and on balance volume. I started off with uh, um, having to um, notate every single day on all the different indexes and, and, and Dow stocks that I was following. I have to add up and subtract. And now and then when I went to computerization, it was unbelievable. And I love the blue line because this gives you the closing price of the on-balance volume, which means you, if it's on, on an up bar, you add it to the previous running total. If it's a down bar, you subtract. And it's as simple as that. Um, you know, many, many, many of the people here at TFN use volume. I use volume, but I use it as on-balance volume. And the on-balance volume says that the gold co uh, contract in the daily is still holding very well. The stochastic has slipped to 61%. The MACD is holding pretty nicely. Uh, not great, but look at this orange line. Look how important this orange line is be as, as, a, as a propellant to the upside. And then look what happened. For months I've been saying, watch this closely because it's becoming support and then it became resistance. And right now at 18, 50, 1868, it is strong resistance and the gold is at 1856. So that just says to me, we aren't yet ready for prime time in gold, but I am not ruling out something to do with gold because gold is, a, a, it really is a hedge for fear, an international geopolitical fear gate. And if you look at that, and if you go to the XLF, which is the, the s and Financials, look how balanced it's been acting. The financials, I've said before, money didn't go from bonds to stocks, as it usually does in a big turn down. This is different. And XLF says, be careful, gold might be in place. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this, combined with the approvals of all major operational, as well as environmental permits, this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. This is the early edition of the opening call, and we're looking at uh, uh, not the opening call. The opening call is by Daily News. That is the uh, early edition of the law, the Tiger Technicians Hour. We're looking at at eight eighteen. The E Mini is down eighty six at thirty eight twelve. Now, what it has done, I should put this as an up arrow. I've been drawing this uh, all the time. Look at this. We've had some really interesting, look how long we've been in a rectangle formation at different times that we were in from, was it last night? No, it was on that slide last night. We started to turn the 3815 area to the 3797 into a, into a rectangle. Look at this rectangle. It stayed there from uh, 420 this morning. Uh, I, well, it started a little earlier. It started at about 4 o'clock so, this morning, Eastern time. And it stayed there until it broke out decisively at about uh, 6, I think I was watching it closely. Yeah, that was at about 6.10. It pulls back, goes to uh, the 200-period moving average. Look at this 200-period moving average. Hugs, 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 goes above it, it falls, 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 goes below it. Then it tries to bounce and it can't and it can't and then it pulls back sharply from the 200 period movie average, makes a tough E and then it goes peak A, peak B. Well, what do you expect in the Chapman Wave methodology? We always like to look for the lowest low bar and then count each successively higher peak. Alphabetically, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but it's at D, the fourth highest peak, that other things can happen. It could recycle higher. It could then have a deepest decline, but you alphabetically, sequentially, uppercase letters, and it's at that fourth highest peak that other things can happen. And what did we just do? When peak A, peak B, peak C, over the 200 period moving average, peak D, using that as now support level, we're going to see. I Now, there are some things I need to talk about right now because this is the moment, and this is pre-market, as I say, it's before any 8.30 news, uh, economic news. Uh, it's, it's kind of important right now at 8.20 uh, a.m., and this will be replay, this will be 10.20, so you're getting the, the current actual cash positions right now. We're only looking at the futures. But look at this. You're starting to see a base form. Now, one of the reasons why for subscribers, I, I said I didn't think that there'd be anything like a crash today 
And I spoke about this on Friday saying my belief is that we just came to see lower lows and lower highs and then really strong rebounds and then lower lows and lower highs. And that could continue until the final climactic low. When that is, uh, maybe it's the traditional September, October low. Who knows? The most important thing is that the, uh, the aspect of Friday, bad, really bad news with a horrible Dow, and then over the weekend, having something happen. Usually, it's a military uh, something happens. But we had that, or we had a, a talk of that about Russia and Ukraine, and then there was something that was sent to me, and I then I saw it uh, a little bit, just briefly mentioned in the news about uh, Iran and uh, their nuclear, uh, what, what they're doing nuclear wise and um, uh, airport bombing in Damascus. And, 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 but the real issue is that, like October the 19th, 1987, that weekend, that Sunday, going to Monday morning, there was always there was a Middle East conflagration, and that usually ex exacerbates the whole. I just don't see that right now. I see so many negatives, and I'm also beginning to see around around the world, what well, it's called the Western world, I don't know about, you know, what's happening in some countries, but countries that where I can read in an English newspaper or even translations, um, everyone is talking about the about inflation. Everyone's talking about higher oil prices. Everyone's talking about prices at, the, at both the pump and at the, the grocery store. Everyone's talking about all the negatives. The markets are coming down, higher interest rates, and I always say that when it finally filters into your local newspaper, that is, I didn't get any more because it used to come door to door, the Newton uh, tab, was, I think it was, the graphic, the tab. Um, and what, so, but I guess you can get it online. But when the news starts filtering your local newspaper, then you know you're getting closer and closer to the the general public. Almost everyone in the general public is talking about this very issue. That's when you're getting closer and closer to a climactic low. But I don't, I didn't see it this weekend, and that makes me suspicious. And I think we are getting really close to at least another one of those bounces that fail. Um, is it a longer term bounce? Is it just a three day bounce? Is it a, uh, an hour? I don't know, but I think we're really close to it. And that's why I said to, to subscribers this morning, I, I don't want to get, I don't want to do any shorting at this particular point right here, um, because I think that there's a chance that maybe we can get better prices to, to short. But my suspicion is that we're getting uh, each rally. It, uh, look here, yeah, look at the Dow. Let me just do this for a moment. I'll show you. Let's go to our, our um, different, this is the daily on the left, weekly on in the middle, right is the monthly. And look, the, the rallies in the daily chart are getting, in a certain sense, let me pull this across, here we go, are getting shorter and smaller. There's big arch formations, the dreaded H formation, were much bigger, and then they failed and went to lower lows. Not very much lower lows, but lower lows nevertheless. This is the XLF, but I'm going to go to the S&P. So this is much, that's what we really want. See these arch formations? And and this one was just a little mini. You went from 38.10 to 41.77, and then failed at a peak C, PC minus. Uh, this is the daily chart. Well, this is either the one that has the least worth of points to the upside, um, when it, if it does turn around and just extends more sideways and then plummets even lower, or this is the one that says you are so oversold, you don't have to have a climactic low, you're just going to have a low that says the volatility index, let's just go to that, the volatility index, uh, which is trading at 32.49 above. You remember on Friday I said, look, we stopped dead right on that trend line resistance chapter wave inside track re re repellent zone. Now we've spiraled above it, and we're above it, and we're above at least uh, all the way into May where we hit the 35s. The highest high was the 2nd of May at 36.54. It really was just rates that was scaring the market at a peak D. We don't usually get uh, Ds in the um, 
in the VIX index, but in this case we did. And now we've got a, a big spiral to the upside. It's actually a gray leg A, not the point. The point is, how does it hold into the close? Do we have a rally intra, intra, intraday and then just a give up and we just start down and that down, it just goes right through all the support levels uh, that we were talking about momentarily um, just a, a few moments, moments ago and the VIX index starts to push even above the 35 level um, and in fact by tomorrow we're looking at 36 uh, the 36s goes above the high that was made made the second I all I can say is that the news has been really bad lately and uh, the VIX is lower than it was at the high in the second so this is making me suspicious of any cascade to the down. I can see a further decline, but I'm talking about a double of this uh, uh, 82 point decline in the S&P now to like 130 or 160 on the end, by the end of the day with a real crash turnaround. I think it's going to be worse. It's going to be this constant triple uh, drip, drip, drip. So that we make lower highs and low lows until we make a really significant low. I'll be back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks, we're back, and we're looking at uh, the um, E-mini having had a really nice rally in the two-minute chart to the 200-period moving average, and then it stalled at a peak C. It's a peak E in the one-minute chart. And of course, it's silly to talk about this now. It's 8.30 in the morning. Some, some economic news must be coming up at 8.30. Um, 
it's really what we're looking at here in the 10 minute chart and with this is what I'm going I'm not going to make any predictions it's silly to do that let me just get rid of this uh, Fibonacci yeah and there was in fact a peak D at I put it as a plus sign at 3 a.m. this morning but in fact that was no, that was 3 a.m. Sorry, that was 3 a.m. on Friday. 3 p.m. Friday. And uh, down arrow. And then we just gap, gap down on Sunday night. And we haven't been at that level in the 3860s, 3850s uh, ever since. We've all gone all the way down to 37, 37, 9750. And this is a 10-minute chart. Got a little rectangle formation here. That's usually not good. V-shaped formations and really powerful moves up above previous uh, resistance levels is what you need to see. So there's going to have to be a trigger for some really some explosive move to the upside rather than the downside because everything is pointing to weakness. Uh, weakness now, I need to do a couple of things. So let me just show you. Um, let, let me just make it clear as far as I'm concerned. At any point, if the market is, if the E-mini is trading down, it's down 8, 90, 82 at 38.17. If it's actually trading at 37.88 or lower at any point today, that really makes it vulnerable for an even greater move to the downside. But on the upside, and this could be the surprise because all the news is out, everybody, all the news is known. The, the actual numbers might be a little greater than anticipated, but basically it's all, all been known. We're talking about, I mean, I'm going to get to it in a moment, uh, rates and all, all things like that. Nothing there is actually unknown. Maybe the numbers and just the fact that it has been printed is making everyone really nervous. But what I am saying is that within the context of uh, crash, I, I think it's much, it's, you know, if we had a crash, it would be all over. Uh, you, you start fresh, you start looking for new positions. This is going to be different. It's this whittling away at, at even the the great winners. And that's the part that's really a problem. So what I'm saying on a shorter term basis, if there is a move where you can see that the, the um, E-mini trading, you can't just go there once. It's got to trade for about, I'd even say 35 to 40 minutes above the high that was made at 310 this morning, which is 3839. Uh, 30, ah, what, 20 points? That's nothing. Now, I, I want it even higher than that. I want it above all the resistance, and I want it above 3853. If there is a move any time today above 3860, let's make the 3860, give it a little bit of room, and it holds for 35 minutes or, or, or more, you could start to see at least... A decent rally. What? A decent rally takes you to where? What? The Dow's down uh, 15, 1600 points in just days. So that gives, says if the Dow can get back, uh, if the E mini can get back that much, the Dow would have to get back at least seven to 900 points by Tuesday, Wednesday to say this is a decent bounce. So all I'm saying is that I think there's support. If that support's broken, anything can happen. But on the on the oversold side of it, I think we really are very very oversold, almost a, a, on any metric on the very short term. That's really what I'm talking about. It doesn't make me bullish. It just says there could be a decent bounce, and then we'll have to start to look for a different shorts. Let's just go through these numbers again. This is a gold. I said a uh, gold was uh, down. Now it's down 24. As I said, I. I didn't understand how that rally occurred on Friday. I just don't think gold is ready right now. I do think it's going to get ready as a geopolitical instrument at some point. I just didn't think it was right now. It could be. But look, it's really taken out the Chapman Wave inside track uh, propellant zone for the couple of weeks for, since it broke down in the weekly chart on the week of the 13th of May, went down to um, 1803. Um, it's trying to get back into the inside track propellant zone, but there's still a re resistance level. The MACD's weak, stochastic's weak at 22%. Unbalanced, but not bad. So this just says to me, there could be a little arch here. Maybe we need a little more time, maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks, and then maybe gold starts. I don't know about that because gold, 
should have been doing much better as it stands right now. So that just, let me show you, silver, silver this time at 8.35 in the morning uh, a.m. Made a peak D. It's down 31 cents at 21.61. The weekly chart has got this H pattern. It's really struggling. Monthly chart is making lower lows and lower highs. Look at the, um, let me just do this while we're here, high-grade copper. Very weak. Made that peak D about six sessions, seven sessions ago. And look at this turn down. It's at 4.19, down 0.09. Look at um, platinum. Platinum's the same thing. Made a peak C that looked like a D. I'd say this this peak C really looks like a D. In fact, what did I look at uh, in the commodities? Wheat, we're still along the DBA, but I think that's going to be pulling back. Wheat is up nine and a quarter uh, points at 10.80. But look at that peak C. I said that that really looks like a D, and it's acting like a D, and it did make a peak D in the weekly chart. And that just says to me, got to be real careful. Look at the look at soybeans. Soybean contract peak D starting to pull back. If you look at the rectangle formation here, I'll talk about that. A lot of questions came in. Could I look at Excel and all that? Let's just get through this quickly, and then I, I'm on my way. So we're looking at so we look at uh, sugar. Sugar's made a, a a very sharp pullback. It's sitting on the 200 period moving average. Arch formation in the weekly chart. What does that mean? Let me show you. Arch formation looks more like a peak G than a peak C, but I'm not going to change that notation just yet. But I'm thinking that the commodities pull back, and this is the clue. Look, crude oil, crude oil is down $1.62. That's not a big deal. But what is a big deal is it's starting to show si some signs of wear in the 120s. It hit 100, the continuous contract hit 123.18. Uh, yep. Uh, five sessions, one, two, three, four sessions ago, and the MACD is just about to cross negative. Stochastic still very good at 86%. On balance, volume is turning down, still good, and the nine's way above the 40. So this is going to be the clue because if crude oil starts to pull back towards the 115 area, huh, 119 right now, you're talking about four points. What are you talking about? Yeah, what if it pulls back? Well, look at Exxon, Exxon Mobil. Bless you. Yeah, we go. Sneeze, sneeze, sneeze. Not yet, not yet. Here it comes. Sneeze. Let's go to the chart. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, peak E uh, on ExxonMobil. Everything else still very positive. Could have a high level consolidation. But I am looking at this and saying CVX, uh, Chevron, peak F with a doji candle high at 182.40 on the 8th of uh, June. I think that we could start to see a bit of a pullback. How does it impact the market? Well, so far the market's Im ignored almost anything that could be positive. But what if, the, if what if, let me go to the TLT. The TLT trading down $1.94 at 111.83. Is that forming the same kind of arch formation uh, that would take out the left side low of the 9th of May, which is at 112.62? Well, this is the one area that really is important enough to say, you could get your pullback in some of the commodities, even oil. But if that yield, if the TNX, TNX, not it, if the 10-year yield continues to break out like it does, 32.48 was the 10-year yield back in uh, October. That if you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be 
be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. 3-2-9-83-22. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. I first came up about Valero. Uh, Valero, uh, also in the oil area, my manufacturer and marketer of transportation fuels and petrochemicals and power, had a high of 146.81, trading uh, pre market at 137.02, down 3.5. As I say, now, let me just go back to my, my point here. My point is that yields going high, I, I think that that's a much bigger picture just in terms of domestic the domestic economy than many of the other factors. Oh, you can't dismiss oil going high, none of that. I mean, oil, I was asked the other day, what what, what would happen if oil went much higher? And I, what I said is, already we've seen the impact. I mean, oil is essentially for 130 years or so has been the economic benefactor in many ways itself and has benefited the US economy and the world economy like nothing else before it. But microchips, and that makes the SMHs as important. Look at this, the SMHs are down pre-market 738 at 216.44. What was the low on the uh, uh, 5th of, uh, oh no, the 12th of May? 215.23, so we're almost there. And if you look at that monthly chart, that is not looking great. 318 was the high in January. And now we're looking at the three, uh, 215s, 100 points, a 30% decline, I'm more than that. So this is serious stuff. So what I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to get a pic, give, a, give a picture. And the picture says oil going higher is, is devastating for the economy because almost everything has some kind of oil uh, residual some some chemical factor, but yields going higher starts to impact areas that for 20 years have benefited by lower yields. Remember my expression back when I started at TFNN, I had said I've been using an expression for the last uh, uh, 15 years or so, or 13, 15 years of the Japanization of U.S. bonds. In other words, yields going to, to, I didn't know zero at the time, but I said going lower and lower and lower. And then about a year ago, I said, you know what? I think I'm getting done. I, towards the end of last year, I said, I think I'm done with that whole thing. I think yields, that whole aspect of yields going to the Japanization of yields, I think we start to see something going on that's different. I don't even want to think about Zimbabwe or anything like that. But higher yields are very important. So the TLT, and this is, and the reason why I, I have to have so much respect for yields going higher and higher is because traditionally forever, whenever the market got volatile, meaning in, in, in Wall Street parlance, going down, money would migrate from the volatility of equities 
into the so-called safety of bonds. You tell me. We've made highs now, just going from December, the 155.12 TLT high, that was the week of the 3rd of December, which coincides within weeks either of the NASDAQ top, I think it was November, or the January top in the Dow and the S&P. You tell me, have yields gone lower or higher as the TLT has gone from 155 to 115? And if you look at um, the stock market, let's just go to, i just get the picture. We talk about a lot of people look more at the S&P than the Dow. Let's go to the S&P. The S&P making a high January the week, of January the 5th at 48.18, down to well, pre-market, we don't know, but 38.10 was the low of uh, uh, earlier in May, May 20th. So they match, and that's, when people say, when I, someone says things are different and everybody rolls their eyes and says, yeah, yeah, we've seen. No, this is very different. So I have to respect the fact that if yields are going to go higher, we have to start looking at this American economy having something else. And what will, that something else will be, we're going to get a chip glut at some point. There's no question about it. You can imagine how many chip companies are just building, building, getting as many chips built as possible, even under these conditions. Some of the conditions aren't being met because some of the fabs are closed down. So what we're finally going to see is that the semiconductors, which have led us up and down, let's go to the SMHs, and the semiconductors made a double top 318.69 in, in November 318.82, in January 31869, these double tops have been formidable. Are we about to see today some kind of a double bottom for a decent bounce? Just a bounce, maybe? I don't know, but I'm just throwing that in. We've seen that over and over, how the double tops I kept using for a year and a half. I've been talking about the amazing aspect that within days, weeks, and even months, and even years, We've seen these double tops make significant tops in markets or, or whatever tradable we're looking at has a huge tumble to the downside. So that's the same thing here. All right, enough with all this. We've got a bunch of questions coming in. I'm going to try to deal with it. Let me just go to here and click so that I can see uh, YouTube questions. Uh, yes. So let me just do this. I haven't done that yet. I've been waiting. We are still long the dollar. Dollar from 19.07 back in 2018. Here it is at 104.81. Uh, doesn't sound like much, but when you're talking about um, commodities, those kind of percentages are huge. So the dollar index is at all uh, multi-year highs. You're looking at it breaking out potential uh, in the in the weekly chart, the high was 105.01. Pre-market, we we're at 104.79. A whisker away. Are we going to see a double top in in the dollar? Well, let's look at this. USDJPY. A uh, question came in. Can I look at the uh, a year, the uh, commodity, the different currencies? Here we go. It's PC. So we're in leg C. Only a leg C in the USDJPY. This is the yen. Japanese yen dollar currency pair, and we're looking at a new, what is this? Uh, I forgot to look. I think this is a, a, at least a multi-year high. I don't know when the last high was. I do. It was at 124.30. Well, this gets smoothed out. Let me give you the exact price. 124.13 was the high the week of, this is a monthly chart, in June of 2007. 124.13. And we're trading right now at 134. So yeah, multi multi year highs in this beautiful cupish formation uh, breaks out in leg E. Uh, look at the uh, EUR USD. This is a Japanese yen. It's doing the opposite. It's making the arch formation. Remember, I said think of think of the market as very often oscillating between arch and cup formations. Well, lo and behold, this is exactly what we've got. Cup formation, arch formation, cup formation, arch formation, breaking to lower lows yet? No, not yet. That's the interesting thing. You made higher highs. You haven't made lower lows. 1.035 1 was the low of the 30th, week of the 30th of monthly. Week of December 2016. And the last low was 1.035.01. Yeah, we, we're going to test that low. 
very soon. So this is very interesting. Uh, we're also going to look at did that, did that, did that, did that, did that, did the currency, did bonds. Okay, we've done all that and the questions have come in. Uh, where do I think Amazon's going? Amazon, I've been saying Amazon is under pressure. I think it's going to be, we talk, spoke about some of those huge moves in the NASDAQ leadership going into October, November, December highs, and then they crumble. Well, now we're looking at the big caps possibly do the same. That's the reason why I think this time when we get to the next big rally, we have another series of shorts because Amazon, although it's split trading at 104.99, is down 4% as we speak. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, early edition of Target Technologies. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi folks, in this final segment, let me just do the, what my, my, out, my outlook is for the day and what the different, uh, different perspectives could be. Um, the Dow futures right now are down 600 points at 30,764. We've had three really ugly candles, and today is going to start off at least in the red, but it's that dreaded H pattern that we're looking at. So the 30,560 level was low on May the 30th. This is in the E-mini. 
Yeah, and this is in the E-mini uh, Dow Futures. So uh, uh, applying that to the cash, just think of it, uh, there's a slight difference. Uh, the futures are down 600 points uh, at this particular stage. Where does the, the Dow open? If it is close, then we're talking about the, almost the same parameters. So three things we're looking at is if there's going to be a one-to-one -one expansion to the downside intraday, that's usually I talk about the noontime price, that if it's very sharp down, Sometimes you get a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. You double the noontime price if that weakness continues. We kind of saw that on Friday. I, to do it a second day in a row, maybe, but my thinking here is that there's a chance, based on the volatility index, VIX.X. Remember, this is a, this show right now is trading. Uh, is it 8:55? It'll be recorded and played back at my usual 10 o'clock time. So the VIX is up. 4.81 at 32.56. If after uh, two, what did I say to subscribe to my opening call? I said, I said after two, uh, let me just check this out just to get it right. Yes, so that if we are looking at um, the, if, if the Dow is trading, now I'm going to use the VIX index. If the VIX index at this particular point uh, 32.57 is trading over 33 points um, after 2.50 this afternoon, 10 minutes to 3. Watch out, that close could really get ugly. But if after 1.50, 10, 10 to 2, 20 past 2, uh, any time during the day you've had some kind of a turnaround and the Dow is only down instead of being down 600, it's actually down minus 280. The sauce improved. You could see a rally into the close. We could have another one of those bounces. And that's what I'm that we get just a series of low highs and low So be careful. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.